as I announced it, we have a guest from East Germany. Hypos is the organization from East Germany. And it's about green hydrogen for central Germany. And we have Stefan Bergander. He's knowledge and innovation manager. Welcome, Mr. Bergander. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Stefan Bergander. I'm from Hypos. Hypos is actually an acronym for Hydrogen Power Storage and Solutions East Germany. So as you can see, we are really talking about storage and really about a solution of hydrogen for the energy system. Um, we actually started in 2012 or 2013 with hydrogen. So like really a front runner, I would say, in our region. Um, I'm currently located uh, actually in Leipzig, in the city of Leipzig and the city of Halle as well. And in this region, you have a chemical triangle. So you have a large chemical cluster producing massive amounts of chemical products and using massive amounts of hydrogen. We are talking about 3.6 billion cubic meters of hydrogen per year. and. Over there, we as well have an infrastructure, so we have a hydrogen pipeline connecting basically the chemical parks from the south to the north um, in the region of Leipzig and Halle. It's 150 kilometers long approximately, so it really spans wide, and it's the second longest hydrogen pipeline which we have in Germany. Um, once again, we are a network trying to cover the aspect of hydrogen making gray hydrogen green, so you need green energy. Uh, we do have green energy in central Germany as well, especially in Saxony-Anhalt. Uh, you can uh, install a large capacity for wind power. We do have other um, spaces available, but obviously we do know that we are right in the middle of Germany and not on the coastline, so we are also looking forward to connect with other regions as well. Um, the reason why we invented or why we came up with HIPOS was a uh, funding from the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in 2012. So we managed to gain 45 million euros of funding and another um, around uh, 70 million uh, of total funds um, to do a lot of research. When we started in 2012, there wasn't so much knowledge about hydrogen. So basically, we came up with the idea we need to develop certain technologies and need to understand hydrogen, um, how uh, it is used and how it is transported, how it is stored in different aspects all around the value chain. So we came up with the idea of 34 R&D projects um, with a lot of knowledge uh, being gained and, uh, and being worked on in the past few years. Basically, we cover different aspects of electrolyzers, how to, uh, to produce hydrogen, especially transport and storage, meaning utilization of the natural gas grid and the natural gas storage units. And as well, we have utilization and distribution uh, within the chemical industry. And of course, the last few years, mobility became an issue as well, which hasn't been has not been an issue in 2012 because everybody was only talking about electric cars. Um, there are other aspects like for safety, for economics. We have a tool where you can basically calculate hydrogen production costs. You can calculate the TS, a TCO, which we heard before, uh, of a whole value chain. So it's a very a lot of aspects, a lot of knowledge which has been created the past few years. But this was the R&D. Obviously, there's a roadmap. I mean, we are not just doing R&D because we like to do R&D. We want to actually use the hydrogen technology. We want to have it in our economy. So we need to figure out something, what to do with all of that knowledge. And one of these larger projects I want to introduce just briefly is um, actually the central German um, hydrogen pipeline grid, which we came up with. Um, we summarized a lot of companies which are major companies in our region. For example, you have DHL with an airport. It's one of the three most important airports of, of DHL in the whole world, with Hong Kong and Cincinnati. Uh, this one is in Leipzig. Then you have Siemens. You have the city of Leipzig as well. We have VNG, um, a large uh, importer for, for natural gas um, in, in whole Eastern Europe. Uh, sorry, Germany. We have Mibrak, for example, which is a company um, currently mining lignite. And uh, well, obviously, we have a structural change for this as well, because Germany wants to phase out the lignite mining for energy purposes. All of these companies came together and they said, OK, we need to uh, take some money, we need to use some money to come up with an idea. How can we in the future supply ourselves with hydrogen? Because we need massive amounts of hydrogen. We need to have this hydrogen in order to 
to switch from natural gas to a renewable resource and also um, maybe connecting to the discussion on the public sector, on the public forum, they were talking about security of supply of natural gas. Uh, we basically came up with a solution how we can do that with hydrogen in the future. The result was a study. So it's the first step to do a study to find out how can we connect all of these companies together and how can they use hydrogen in the future. Since they use so much hydrogen, they need to have a pipeline connection. Since we already have a hydrogen pipeline, we thought maybe this is a good idea to extend the hydrogen pipeline grid. You can see the result of that over here. You can see the city of Leipzig, the city of Chemnitz. You can see the city of Halle over here. And all these orange pipelines are new pipelines we want to construct to um, supply these companies with green hydrogen in the future. As I said in the beginning, we already know that we don't have as much green energy as we need. Uh, to put it in numbers, we have a regional hydrogen demand of 20 terawatt hours per year. That's really a lot of hydrogen. But we can only supply with own capacities in our region two terawatts. So you know there's a large gap. So we need to figure out something to do in the future. We need to figure out how to connect our region to other parts of Europe and to other parts of Germany, which you can see over here. There's a, a pipeline going up north to Rostock and another one going up north to Salzgitter, where you have this large steel um, producer. And these pipelines are also part of the European framework of the IPSI, the International Project of Common European Interest. Um, because the European Union sees our region, it needs to stay there. We need to have the chemical production over there to supply Germany and not just also in other parts of Europe with chemical products. And we cannot just switch this location to another part in Europe. So we need to find a way to connect this region um, to a regional, to an international uh, hydrogen pipeline grid, which is, for example, these two going up north. Um, well, uh, there's a total length, obviously. I mean, it's a, it's a large, a large distribution grid, about uh, 300 kilometers long, which with uh, 13 segments, so you can really build all of these parts separately. It's not just PowerPoint, you know, there was an actual simulation of the gas flow. Is it possible to actually operate that grid in the future? Can you, how much, uh, how much units you need to, uh, to pressurize the hydrogen and all of that. It's all part of the, of the study which we did. We just published it, I think, like four or five weeks ago. Um, you can actually access it on our website hypos-eastgermany.de and uh, well if you have any further questions you can you can obviously ask me after the presentation um, hypos itself is a hypo hypos uh, sorry is a hydrogen network so we consist um, of several services which we provide for our, for our members, for the companies. Um, we have events, obviously, like our large uh, yearly event, annual event. We have shorter events, the Hypos Dialogue, which is basically about really technical aspects. So it's not just about coming together and talking. It's also about actually gaining knowledge at these events as well. Um, we have another program which I want to, which I want to advertise for. It's Hypos Macht Schule, meaning like Hypos does school or hypos goes to school. So for example, if we talk about hydrogen, we also need to think about all these people which can install all of these uh, um, technical utilities and which can actually you know, make hy hydrogen happen. So we need to um, address all of these issues in school as well. So we invented a program where we, we already do that. We go to a school, we have um, uh, several hours of, of class, um, to, to talk about hydrogen in the future, to actually build a value chain with, with tiny uh, toys, and so to get pupils really to know what is hydrogen and why we need that and why we need to do that in the future. This is also available if you're interested in that. You can get a short version, and there's a lot of interest currently going on, and we are trying to, to distribute this concept all around Germany. Um, these are our members. We consist of more than 160 members. It's usually uh, one third of large companies, for example, like Siemens or Linde. It's another third of, of SMEs, which are very important, especially in Germany, especially in, in hydrogen, developing very specific products which you need for the hydrogen value chain. And there's another third of companies basically consisting of research institutions. This is our board. Um, I'm not going to get into detail about all of these people, but maybe just to get a, uh, 
a glimpse of, of how important maybe we are. Uh, for example, Dr. Sylvia Schattauer is also part of the Nat National uh, Hydrogen Council, which is basically the, the biggest uh, council in Germany currently um, talking about hydrogen issues on a, on a really on a federal level. And this is it. This is like a very short and brief introduction to HYPOS. We have done really a lot of research, a lot of programs uh, were developed in the past few years. And if you're interested in anything further, please get in touch. And thank you for your attention. Oh, thanks a lot for this interesting presentation. And I'll thank just you. stay a moment. Maybe there are any questions from the audience? I like it very much, uh, the inspiration which you radiate in a way Thank you. <laughs> That's to bring it to schools, to bring it to younger people, to, to teach what it can mean and to inspire people to develop more about w themselves. So if there are no more questions, you can visit. Oh, what's, what's your name? There's a question. Actually. Oh, there's a question? Uh, I understood green hydrogen means the power uh, supply for green hydrogen ha has to be also green. Yes. H how you can detect the power supply is green? Well, if you have a wind power plant, you have green energy, right? Yeah, but the power plant, the, the, the wind or solar, is connected to network. Yeah, to a grid. Which you yeah, to the grid. Yes. Which combined uh, electricity from uh, sources, from uh, mm -hmm. gas turbine, steam turbine, and also from wind turbine. Yes. How, how we can detect the source or the supply which going to the to the green hydrogen factory? Yes. Is um, green. Yes. I mean, you can if you have a grid connection, you can basically buy guarantees of origin, which is sort of like a. Um, how to describe. So basically we have a certificate which tells you the energy you just bought from the grid is green energy somewhere. It has to, it has, uh, it was input into the grid somewhere all around Europe. It can be done somewhere. And if you buy, for example, let's say one megawatt of power, you can additionally buy this uh, certificate and you pay a, an additional charge, but then you know you actually have green energy from a, from a balance level point of view. Yeah, great. If you have more questions, you can see Mr. Stefan Berganda. It's close by. 78, right? Yes, I so. think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming. Thank Give you. him an applause. Thank you.